Hello everyone, my name is Dale and welcome to the fifth Talking Stick show. I'm joined by my co-host Chris Adams. Uh, hello again everyone, hello Dale is. Hello, hello, it's hello. Um, hello brother. So we have a special guest with us today. We have Liz Cunningham. Hello Liz. Hi there, hi Dale, hi Chris. Hi. Hi, how are you doing Great today? Are you okay? You. I think it's great to be here anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> so I'd like to thank as well Tom Taylor, which I haven't done before on the show, for the music. And again, I'd like to give my appreciation to Chris Adams, who is chopping all this up and putting it on YouTube, doing the editing and the video. So I just wanted to have a quick moment before we start on saying thank you, Chris, and thank you, Tom. So... We'll start and begin. So, Liz, tell us a bit about. Okay, yeah. So, I uh, I have a clinic, Otley Natural Health Clinic, which for a lot of people nowadays it seems strange that I'm calling it Otley Natural Health Clinic because I'm actually in Huby. I was in Huby <laughs> for uh, 15 years. And prior to that, I was in the Channel Islands. I was in the Channel Islands for six years. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm I'm in Huby. Uh, the clinics attached to the house. Uh, so about me, um, I'm uh, married. I've been married for this year, forty-five years. Hey, wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> Get the poppers up. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got uh, twin daughters, Jane and Emma, who are forty-two, and a grandson, uh, Jack, who's a love of my life, uh, who's ten. <laughs> And uh, I, I do what I do because I love what I do. And I can't imagine not. Uh, I, it's just part and parcel of me. It's in my yeah. And uh, yeah. recognise that. Uh, that and I, so what led you on to this path then of healing and spirituality and being a therapist? So was there any uh, transition point or from childhood growing up or anything which gauged you into the direction of going down the path you are here? in the now yeah i really uh, I, uh, obviously i knew you were going to ask that question and yeah you know i could make it very complicated and it isn't it's very simple i was just born in i was born uh my granddad okay. was a natural healer yeah. uh, my mum was a natural healer i'm actually one of seven so i'm a fifth child i'm um, oh. very very different to my other siblings uh to- very very different yeah um, I, I always I, I mean, I can't say from a child I knew that. Uh, okay. That would be ridiculous. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a child, exactly. But my mum used to say to me, because, you know, we, I'm, I'm 64 now, so we're going back a long time. Um, and she used to ask me to be be careful of what I said. Because I used to, my, my, my main, my main, connection if you like yeah. to spirit was a sense of smell okay. um I've still got a very very strong sense of smell but also I used to see things um and, and I, th- I would say all children can see auras um yeah. I used to talk to mom or say to people what I could see uh, which obviously very young um, yeah frightened people and I used to see um see okay yeah so I actually learned to, um, I learned very young to uh, push it aside. Okay. Uh, to, to know that that was making me different. It was making me different even from, it made, made it difficult to make connections with friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went, I practised uh, not to connect. Mum... I always had the connection with my granddad, really yeah. special man, and my mum. Uh, mum was busy. Obviously, she had t- seven children. Yeah, uh, yeah. But she wow. had this, uh, you know, ability to, you know, there was always somebody in the house. There was, as there was with my granddad and my nana, yeah. uh, and with my mum. She was just naturally. She never saw, saw herself as a healer, um, okay. but you know, it was just naturally there. But she also recognised she she learned a way of just using it yeah. you know okay. attention to herself people used to just come around and you know with yeah. you know birds with broken wings and all that sort of thing <laughs> <laughs> oh. and can i can i ask a question from uh what i don't know why it's just popped into my head what's it like being um uh, with obviously 
seven children in the house. What's it like being like that? Because I've got six kids myself, so it'd be nice to hear from your perspective what it was like for you growing up with that many people in the house and how did it help you and benefit from you in this moment? <laughs> it's it, difficult. I'm, I'm not sure whether it actually helped or benefited me. I, <laughs> it was horrendous for me. It was, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I you know, I, it, it was, I had a sister, Linda, who died five years ago and she was my sister who was, I was closest to. She was two years older than me. And she had, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at 38. Mum had multiple sclerosis, actually. Uh, both of them, that's going off a little bit. I'm not answering your yes, question. we'll get back to that, yeah. Mom, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so what was it like? Um, noisy. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't have, I, I didn't get any space. Uh, yeah. So I used to retreat and read. Um, yeah. So I can't say it was a joyful experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get some insight, you see. <laughs> when I was little and growing up to about seven, yeah. I would say we, well, there was a big change at seven. Um, yeah. the houses and we moved back to England, which was a really difficult time. Um, yeah. So I would say, you know, up to that age, then it was probably, you know, I had that family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so, so how long have you been a therapist then for you? So for all of, do you want to tell everyone out there what you do, what treatments you do and um, explain a little bit more about that? We'll go into that side of things. Yeah, so I'm a naturopath. A uh, naturopath literally heals, for me anyway, for, for me as a naturopath. If you, yeah. if you Googled it, it would say a naturopath heals holistic, which would do and uses... Yeah. Uh, and uses um, depending on what you're looking at, which yeah. is um, potions and, and what have you to Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I absolutely, and a lot of people I've worked with, they work, and that, for me, for me, seeing myself as a naturopath, I really try to empower people to recognise their own healing ability. So, okay. uh, and that is through uh, whatever means. Yeah, yeah. In the mind, right, to know that they are powerful and they are, can heal them. Along, uh, themselves. Um, yeah. So uh, I use, so as you know, it's uh, colon hydrotherapy. Colon hydrotherapy, I only trained, I know it sounds crazy saying I only trained 20 years ago, but you know, I, I'd been a therapist for a long time before that. Yeah, and, okay. Uh, on the islands, and I trained with somebody called Dr. Milo Suart, who was just an inspiration. He was such a lovely guy. He's passed away now. Uh, he was a mentor. He was just wonderful, L- wonderful person yeah. in my life. And um, I'd already trained in um, uh, as a master practitioner in uh, traditional Chinese medical massage, which is called Twina. Okay. Wow. Uh, master practitioner in Thai body work. Yeah. And, uh, traditional Chinese uh, medicine, as in. And so I it, together, I, tr- I in in the one course I did yeah. Twina Thai an acupuncture okay. wow. with another wonderful teacher uh, called Maria McCarty. And crazily enough, I'd gone and then ended up spending a week out of every month for three years in Chelsea. Yeah. I have got no idea how I afforded it, how we afforded it. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, even though I don't use acupuncture, that was a yeah. really important part of, um, I don't use it now. I, I did use, did use to use acupuncture, but all okay. really part of understanding energy medicine. And yeah. uh, so, um, yes, of course, I, I am a nutritionist. I've studied yeah. natural nutrition uh, with um, Barbara Wren at the College of um, Natural Nutrition. So yeah. I studied there. Um, uh, probably 19 years ago now. Okay. Um, so, uh, but originally, originally when I studied nutrition, it was when I was 24. Uh, so and my daughters were two, and I went to work in a, a a gym called Olympic Health Studio. And the guy okay. that owned that had spent a lot of time in America. It was called Bob Sweeney. Again, spent, I've, I'm re- very blessed to have met some Amazing people in my life. Yeah. And, uh, Bob Sweeney, um, just, he, you know, was, we're talking about 40 years ago now. He had this gym and he 
he his his absolute belief was we are who we are through our thoughts. So therefore, anyone that worked for him, uh, he encouraged them to study Napoleon Hill and all those people. So yeah, and I paid a hundred pounds forty years ago for some tapes <laughs> called "Life Is for Loving, Laughing, and Living," or "Living, Loving, and Laughing." Yeah, I drove Graham up the wall by listening to them every night with American <laughs> accent while I was in bed. <laughs> so it was important to fall to sleep listening to these tapes, and that had an amazing impact on my life. Yeah, uh, because I'd had there's been a lot of trauma uh, in my young life, and therefore that allowed me to just you know be yeah. be, be who I am, and that I've carried on with that throughout my life from there. Yes. Um, we're doing a lot of work on um, on my and still do. So I also do, uh, which I only trained last year in Psych K, okay. psychological kinesiology, uh, which I'm I love. Uh, again, it's taking it's just another tool uh, to help clients. And uh, ten years ago, I studied Nate. That's num. Nambudripad's allergy elimination technique yeah. is pretty much probably 50% of, of my business, if you like, the clients that I see being very powerful. And I, I, brought, I was brought to that. So everything that I've done, I've been brought to it for. Yeah, yeah. I brought to that because um, my sister Linda, who was dying, um, she'd been put on something called the Liverpool pathway, which means they take food and drink away and let you just rot. Um, it normally takes about a week to die. And uh, so I'd got a telephone call from my mum to say Linda had been taken in and her partner had given consent for to go on to this Liverpool pathway. I just go and visit her and watch her die or ask her if she wants to come home with her. With me. Yeah. So um, I asked Graham, my husband, if he would support me. And, you know, he could have said no, and he, but he didn't. He said, absolutely, he loved Linda dearly. Um, so we brought her home. It wasn't as simple as that, of course. It took about three months to bring her home. But yeah, by, yeah. by getting the everyone involved to actually bring in, bring in her home, she'd been so neglected. She was so, so neglected uh, through medical uh, yes. yeah. um, So it took us three months. Um, but by by taking like control or or if I, I I would say stepping into the power yeah. that I had uh, was to get her on a peg feed to get food and water into her to keep her alive until we got yeah. because I couldn't um, work on detoxification as with food. I, I had to look out of the box. I couldn't massage her because she was in so much pain. Yeah. Um, I couldn't use body brushing or any of the things, all those things I had in my toolbox, I couldn't use. Yeah. Except for healing, which obviously that was, that was ongoing. Yeah. Uh, so Nate was introduced because the only um, Nate practitioner, the, oh, sorry, the only Nate trainer just happened to live 20 minutes away. Uh, the only Nate trainer in the UK lived 20 minutes away from where we were living. Synchronicity. I spoke <laughs> to one of my clients one day and I said, I just don't know what to do. Linda had only been with us at home for a couple of weeks. And she said, why don't you contact Helen Bowman? Which I did. And I told her I was testing her out. Yeah. <laughs> As people do with me, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> and, uh, because it just seems so crazy. I mean, I've obviously yeah. had to come across kinesiology mm. uh, but there she, Helen was you can use little computer generated energy fields of whatever yeah, yeah. thousands of vials as I do now uh, putting it into my hand testing me and treating so I had a, a, a two or three treatments and then Helen started to come to the house at that time that's what she did um, so I could see Linda was uh, I'd, I'd started to work with the GP the GP was another angel that came into our life um, he said you know basically I said I wanted to get Linda off her medication she was on milligrams 
the paracetamol a day she was on. Wow. Just huge amounts of really heavy drugs. That they were the least heavy. Yeah. And um, she just screamed 24-7. She was in so much pain. She was in so much, she had so much toxicity. Um, so that was that was the beginning of Nate. So anyway, she, she lived for another seven years. She had seven years. And that was, yeah. you know, a lot to do with a lot of healing, uh, getting off a of medication. She lived um, a good life. She was still yeah. disabled, um, but she was healthy. She was on the absolute, after, it took six months, that's all, to get off the medication. Mm. And then she started to ease up and obviously with a lot of healing and using um, uh, sound, uh, just at her, yeah. uh, the mm. person I worked with there on the herbs was um, John Andrews in Beverly, who was wonderful. So yeah. a of things, you know, for, and it's, so she lived with us for four years and then went into a wonderful home uh, called uh, uh, Leonard Cheshire Home. Yeah. Um, and she lived there for three years and she just fell asleep with no 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 illness other than her MS so that's yeah. where, that's, that's where Nate came from from a really good place oh wow mm. and yeah I'm sorry to hear that there was a, it just actually brought up a, a question for you is uh, a lot of people seem to be in this world to, um, toxic of uh, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, paracetamols or um, antidepressant drugs. I've got a family member who's been taking antidepressants. And what I'd like to ask you is, because they're on it for so long, say if you have someone who's been on antidepressants for 15, 10 years and their body's so used to it, and uh, I've had conversations with them and it's been like cutting off heroin when they've come off it, they've literally... They wanted to die. They wanted to. Um, they've had the sweat, so it's like a big drug withdrawal. Or what would be your um, advice for all of those out there? Because I've got people I'd like to give advice to to help them, assist them on removing all the pharmaceutical stuff from the body. Where would you start, Liz, on that side of things? Well, to be honest, uh, Dale, you know, you, you know what answer I've got, I'm, I'm giving. This is going to go out to YouTube, and I can't even be start suggesting to people that they come off that uh, yeah of course you, of course yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not seeing them I can't support yeah. them and to yeah. be honest I would never ever I mean it was different with Linda I was with her 24-7 okay so I was able to and and I had the doctor's support because he realised that yeah. you know Linda had been told she was dying she would have been oh. dead in a week she was, she was four and a half stone when she came that was after oh, three no. four and a half stone when she actually came to live with us she was you know, yeah. the drugs. But I was able to, I was able to support her on a day-to-day -day level, and as I say, I had the support of the GP. Um, but I would say now, uh, if it was a family member, yeah, yeah, I was able to support them when they wanted to do, it, wanted to come off. Wanted their, to do it, yeah, yeah, of course. Drugs, um, and they were working with a practitioner. Uh, then it, they'd have to be working with the doctor. The doctor would have to know, to me, they'd have to know, they'd have to have some support. Definitely. Um, that's where, you know, a functional medicine doctor will come in because yeah. I'm a medicine doctor, I'm, I'm a naturopath, so I'm not doing, I'm personally not doing blood tests, although I can, I'm a, I have studied phlebot phlebotomy. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, a t it's a tough one because I've, there's a lot of people out there who, they've had this awakening or had this spiritual awakening and they've gone completely against the doctor. And from my own perspective, I think it's quite dangerous yes. um, having to do that. And I think our ego can get in the way and involved in all situations. I do believe that majority of the stuff they are giving out is toxic, but I do believe there's a level in the sense that we have to get advice, even if it's from a GP who's working for the farmer, we Absolutely. have to have that level of responsibility and not be stupid because I've heard stories of people killing themselves because they didn't want to go to the doctor or they didn't want to take a, um, a, a antibiotic. And yeah. uh, I think there's like a, a fine line because I've had this conversation with you myself about my children and you advised me to, about the doctors and obviously doing the uh, antibiotics when this did happen. So um, what's your view on everything on that, that side of things? 
What as far as the as, med- as far as listening to your doctor, your GP, if ever, anybody out there is all of a sudden completely against going to the GP, because I when I went through my awakening twenty twelve, I was like that. To see any doctors anymore, I'm not yeah. going to do this. What, what yeah. advice would you give to people out there who have been awakened and they're not knowing who to trust? Yeah, yeah, you you have to. If you don't trust a GP, then you need to change the GP that you have. Yeah, okay. yeah. You you work with somebody who's who's listening to you, supporting you. Uh, you know, I mean, I would never ever recommend to somebody um, that's on uh, medication just to come off it themselves. And yeah, need support absolutely. Um, and uh, and you know, if you're working with a, a any any registered practitioner, would never ever encourage somebody to come off the medication they would want to that that you know to go to the doctors tell yeah. the doctor who they're working with and the doctor you know so i mean I've, I've got quite a lot of gps that come to see me and uh you know if so the, you know there's a lot of gps out there who are very connected to spirit and very connected yeah. to health and uh, it's finding somebody who is That's um, it. that respects your um, confidentiality and everything yeah, and your journey and if they yeah. feel that there's a chemical imbalance or they know there's a chemical imbalance not a feels a chemical imbalance then they'll know it from, uh, from the, the knowledge of you yeah uh, then uh, there, there will maybe some people can't come off medication it's the level yeah, of, of medication and what other medication it's um, I have I, I know I know somebody who's a pharmacist that works within a medical practice and she does absolutely great work uh, yeah. she you know looking at medication it's finding a practice where that happens where somebody's sitting down and looking at your medication and talking to the doctor because that's what she does and adjusts medication in a way that's very supportive yeah mm-hmm. definitely and it's about the doctors all coming together and actually listening to people and if they feel uncomfortable um i've actually had um, a close family member who has been on an antidepressant and she's tried to tell them that she doesn't want to be on them anymore but they've not really listened to what she wanted to say and um, so it's kind of it's it's hard in a sense because in, from my own life experience my nan had um, uh, MS as well and she mm-hmm. passed away at the age of 70 with a spine broken and she was on every single drug she was on like hundreds of tablets a day and she was in the worst pain for the last few years, years of her life she she they had to stop the ventilator for her and she had to die over like three hours of just trying to survive and they had to turn off the life machine so that's what really inspired me to get more into healing because I've seen it from my own point of view close family members who have died of disease died of not being well or not being able to understand nature and all it has to offer and uh, so Going back onto the hydrotherapy things, Liz, can you tell those a bit about, about hydrotherapy? Because this is how I met you. I came to see you uh, for some colonic sessions, which honestly were phenomenal. On the fifth session, uh, I remember the upper colon releasing a hell of a lot and I had stuck trauma there, which I wasn't choosing to let go of. So it's very, very interesting. So <laughs> can you just explain uh, a bit about colonics and hydrotherapy and how that works and so on and so forth? Yeah, so first of all, for anyone that's not experienced the chronic hydrotherapy treatment, it, <coughs> we always, always look for a registered practitioner. Uh, they would always be registered with a CN, CNHC, yeah. Complementary and Natural Healthcare Council. And I, I personally uh, would always go suggest that somebody went to an ARCH-registered uh, practitioner, which obviously I'm registered with the ARCH. ARCH is the... The long that they would been around the longest time, yeah. And Arch was set up by Dr. Milo Sawat. So, most of us older registered practitioners were actually trained by Milo, who was a, a medical doctor as well as a chiropractic uh, doctor. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the first thing make sure you're seeing a registered practitioner. A lot of people have the idea that if you have, do colonics, you've got to be registered. Actually, that's not true at all. You can decide, you could anyone can decide one day to go out and buy a machine. I don't use a machine because I'm a registered, most of us registered practitioners uh, don't uh, use gravity feed. That doesn't mean to say a machine is negative. It isn't. It's yeah. the hands it's in. 
So the, the first and foremost thing is to make sure somebody's properly registered and uh, that whatever registration is, it's with the CNHC. Okay. Actually, um, it's also uh, CNHC and, oh gosh, um, there's another body actually, but uh, the CNHC is uh, supported by the government. Okay. That's shocking. I can't remember the other. The other. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so a registered practitioner, and it should the the procedure, as you know, is very gentle. Um, you know, when somebody first comes along, I, I sit down, spend about half an hour w with the person, find out, yeah. fill out, as you know, fill out a, a, a quite in depth medical questionnaire, yeah. and the they. The actual treatment is specially filtered, warm water that's uh, put, what's happening there? Uh, okay. <laughs> so <that's good. laughs> I can see it. <laughs> a special of warm water that's, uh, that's put into the bowel through what's called a speculum. Speculum goes into the bottom by about an inch. Obviously, that's, special, that's well yeah. lubricated. And the, the tubes, the, the warm water, and the waste is there, those tubes are external. Um, so that's, that goes into the water, uh, into the bowel gently. You, yeah. start, you start off on your left hand side, and then you're coming on, onto your back with the knees bent. And I, the, the way the water gets around the colon is through massage. Uh, okay. deep massage to the comfort of the person. So massaging from the left hand side of the bowel up underneath the uh, the left rib across the, the the mid mid part of the bowel, which is called the transverse colon, yeah. under the right rib and down into the uh, into the sort of right hip area. So it's not through pressure. People have this idea that your bowel is just filled up. It, that isn't how the water gets round. If okay. the pressure of the water is in too much and you're not massaged, you actually, to me, you're getting a high what's called a high enema, which when somebody goes away to say a spa. And they, um, or a, a retreat. Most people, I would say, get a hard enema. They're, they're given a, a enema bag, told to go into the loo, and they're told it's the colonic, which it isn't the colonic. That's yeah, actually, totally different. Yeah, enema, entirely different. So the, the purpose of the the colonic is to soften matter, uh, very toxic matter, as it happens. Yeah, um, and release that out. And of course, one treatment doesn't get rid of that's built up in the bowel. Uh, it has to, you can only move matter that's soft enough to move. And the layers of matter that build up like rubber in the bowel, they will be softened as you, you carry on. Yeah. And through, really importantly, as looking after your health and hydrating. Somebody that comes yeah. to me who's very dehydrated, uh, I, don't, I won't want to be seeing them the next week because, you know, it will, as you know, I'm not. I'm not looking at weekly treatments anyway, uh, yeah. unless somebody's pretty hydrated and going through a detox procedure. You can only detox if you're hydrated anyway. It's the working on the, the hydration of the bowel and moving that toxic, very compact matter out of the bowel. So it's a whole, it's a gentle procedure. As somebody who's got IBS, I'm just, I just work on everybody very individually. Um, it's working with the bowel, so it yeah. has little discomfort as possible. And it, and once the bowel is, as it gets clearer, it can be, as you know, quite can be quite relaxing. Yeah. Well, I, I've actually, because I went to see a lady near York uh, before, and it was two totally different experiences. Uh, she massaged a little bit, just a tiny bit, but when I went to see you, Liz, you had a real sense of all of where everything was, and there was a much deeper... Uh, deeper movement and I felt like I was clearing a lot more and understanding a lot more myself instead of just going in there not knowing what's going on and going yeah. out there uh, is there any stories you could share you'd have to say names of anybody it's really helped or any anybody yeah I've got, I've, I've got uh, so the, the I suppose the biggest thing is that from so many people I see they so many people I see come to me because they're bloated yeah and um, so that that is the, a big thing. But I had somebody about 
I mean, Ben, you might have been doing this 20 years, so I've seen, I could, you know, I could be here all day telling the stories. <laughs> um, but I saw a, a young woman, uh, maybe about five years ago, slim, um, looked after herself, but chronic constipated. And she had been having colonics for about five years before she saw me, uh, yeah. months, actually. And her stomach was absolutely an unregistered practitioner she didn't know the practitioner was unregistered oh, okay. and I wasn't going to start yeah. you know t- 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 talking down about the practitioner yeah of course yeah area as it happened that's why she came to see me so, so she'd moved area and she came to see me but her her her, her bowel was a waste for somebody that was so tiny she had no waste and um she had a bowel movement once a month and she'd been told that was quite normal well when you're having colonics the first thing I see as you know that what I work towards is people coming to me for health reasons not because they can't go to the toilet from one session to the next you know my job is to get people's bowels working so they're working functioning normally and when they come to me it's it's reasons um, so that, yeah, yeah. after about, probably about six sessions, she came in absolutely tipped as anything. She, obviously, she was also already going to the toilet. I mean, I would I get that in really quickly that uh, she was going to the toilet at that point once a day. So okay. once, a month, once a month to once a day. I actually try and get people to go at least twice a day. Our bowel should move three times a day. Uh, okay. Eating three times a day. We should have three bowel movements a day. But yeah. she was going once a day, which to her was which is wonderful. Um, but she'd been, her friends were telling her that she looked like she'd lost weight. She didn't need to lose weight as it happens, but she'd got a weight. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she'd gone from to um, having regular bowel movements yeah. and having uh, her flat to me. Um, yeah. and I had a, again, recently, uh, fairly recently, one, a lady that really stands out. She was 80 years old, and, or is 80, she's probably 82, now 83, and yeah. had had, she'd been constipated all her life from a child. Yeah. So when she came, she ha- again, she'd had colonics before, but moved area. She was a, she'd moved from being abroad. And she'd just used colonics as a, um, a prop, really. Yeah. Um, still very, very constipated, and she just, you know, was resigned to that. And uh, so she had a, had a few colonics, started to go to the toilet every day, which was, you know, for, you know, for anybody out there that's listening to this who has been constipated, they, it, it's sort of like the norm. There's nothing that can, is. Not to say yeah. nothing that can be done. So therefore, yeah. you know, there's nothing that can be done. It's not true. Yeah. Constipated, it means that you usually it means that you're chronically dehydrated. The bowel can't function. The main function of the bowel is to hydrate us, so we need enough water. The bowel's dehydrated, yeah. every cell of the body's dehydrated. So it's a uh, you know, I, as I said, it, it's not even about single people. It, it, to me, everybody I see is going to benefit. There isn't anybody, no matter how healthy you are. Isn't going to benefit, and but for my own story, um, I had done a huge amount of detoxification. I came to, as I say, I came to colonic 20 years ago. I used to do a six week spring, uh, spring detox every year, and a six week autumn detox every year, full body cleanse using lots of herbs, enemas. I used enemas three times a day, coffee enema in the morning. Anybody listening, please don't rush in and do coffee enemas. You really need to know what you're doing before you do coffee. <laughs> you can't do coffee enema unless you're hydrated. Otherwise, it's just yeah, yeah. hydrated. Coffee enema in the morning, water enema at lunchtime, um, chamomile enema at night. And that's what my regime was for six weeks. Okay. And then I decided to do the training for clonics for lots of different reasons, which I'm not going to. Nothing to do with myself. It was purely to do with, at the time, it was Princess Diana and Fergie who were having colonics, and every man and his dog wanted a colonic. And I was in the Channel Islands. Yeah. People were, you know, clients it's like the keto them. diet of now. <laughs> Everyone wants to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought it was a fad, to be honest. I really did yeah. think it was a fad, and 
you know, people had too much money to spend. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I went to visit Milo, and at the time, it was he was in uh, uh, Dorset. Funny enough, my daughter lives literally around the corner now from where he his practice was. And yeah. um, it was a, a one-to-one. Uh, so I spent a week with him uh, on a one-to-one. Okay. And um, uh, I just finished my spring detox. So six weeks of juicing, of herbs. I've done this for many years, spring and autumn. And as far as I was concerned, my bowel was squeaky clean. Never been constipated in my life. You know, I was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> blissfully, no, blissfully absolutely not. It was just amazing. It was just <laughs> all the stuff that I'd done up to that point. Of <laughs> at that point, for about 15 years. It was just <laughs> mind uh, So there I was. I had my first colonic. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, my God. It was just so much. Because I was so hydrated. And I yeah. Herbs. Even though I've been doing three enemas a day, people, it was this idea, even yeah. where I've been trained, that enemas clean the bowel, actually yeah. support the liver in the hydrate. Yeah. Okay. But the enemas do not get all the way down the bowel. So I had the colonic, and it was just this thick mud that came out. <laughs> and I had a colonic every day for the seven days, which I would only, uh, only I very, very rarely would ever do that. Okay. Uh, but it, and every day I had this huge amount of batter. It was just, um, it was just so incredible. So for me, that was it. If I, if I could pass that, <laughs> oh, well, need a tough colonics. I was just on a mission now. <laughs> 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 so that was that, that. To me, that's why I do colonics. Actually, yeah, but beautiful, that, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've had colonics myself, and personally they have transformed me and transformed my life. When I was going through the sessions, I do believe a lot of our gut holds memory of trauma and I do believe we store a lot of stress in our colonic as well. Yes. Uh, so when I was going through doing this with Liz, I had a lot of father stuff come up on like the fourth one where there's all this stress related to my, my father and, and all that energy. And after this session where I, I it was so weird because each session was kind of like, a bit not chilled out but it was like it was it was all fine and on like the fourth or fifth session I was like it was like an immense like it was the upper colon it was an immense over it wasn't overwhelming pain it was like a, when you need to go to the toilet but it's like times a thousand and uh, I could feel it and I can I still got to I still got some work to do on it I still need to keep digging at it I'm not got it out at all but uh, I could really feel a lot of stuff and uh, from my own perspective, I've done it quite a few times and it's phenomenal. And I think everyone needs to put their ego aside when they think of colonics. So they, they, oh, it's disgusting or whatever. It's not. It's, it's a beautiful therapy which we have available to us. And when we drop us drop the ego and realise how much of an impact it can help our lives, it can add year on, years onto our lives. Yeah. Um, so is, is there any other ways you would recommend to support the colon then, Liz? I'm just going to say that one to what you were saying. Actually, that's yeah. a really good point you made because we do hold, you know, when people when people come to me who are working on deep, uh, on, on issues and deep issues, when they, to, to have a release, it can be so huge from the colon. It yeah. can be this huge huge release of matter even if I could be working on somebody for let's say they're coming to me in every six weeks or three months and then they start yeah. doing some deep work whether it's with somebody or just themselves meditating yeah uh, I do as you know I, I t- t- teach you how to uh, massage your bowel yeah uh, yeah keep it really active um but to actually start to work on something it, it, that release we hold on to emotions in our bowel without a doubt and that can be huge uh, relief so what was the question you asked me <laughs> yeah so so yeah we def- definitely hold on to some um dense energy in our bowel movement and i was asked just asking is there any other ways to support the colon but i just wanted to explain as well on a on a spiritual perspective but so when we dream um we our chakras go in and we basically we come out where the colon is so I'm trying to think. So between where the, if you know where the sacral chakra is, so just that on the gut there is that's where we dream out of. So when you actually have 
colonics, which I've experienced, your dreams magnify tenfold because when your spirit's going out, the, the negative data, there's not as much negative data for it to filter through before it goes to the, uh, the dream world. So from my own perspective, my dreams, I could remember my dreams again when I had my colonics and my spirit, my, my, my whole aura, my, myself felt so much more intact because I was getting rid of negative data in the spirit. And it's about being aware that we are spiritual beings and it's so important to do the work inside because you can't do the inner work and not do work on your colon, on your kidneys. And for all of those who think they're healed and they've done all the meditations, you can do a thousand hours of meditation every few months but you need to start on detoxing your organs you need to start on quite going back to the question Liz uh, is there any other ways you can recommend to uh, work with the colon on clearing the colon out and giving it some help hydration Um, yeah yeah. I mean of course work work with the mind whatever techniques you use number one in fact uh, and I've made some notes on the most powerful detox, most powerful techniques for detoxification. And um, so we have to hydrate. And to hydrate, if people think it's just to drink two litres of water, or three litres of water, whatever, it's not actually just about drinking water. It's a yeah. warm water. Warm water okay. is really, really important because I've just been having this conversation yet again today with somebody. Uh, on on the phone uh, which I um, I, you know for anybody that contacts me like that it's always the same conversation Uh, (laughs) how much water do you drink? oh I drink lots of water okay lots of water oh uh, I cook uh, you know four cupfuls what do you cook for cold oh they hold oh I don't know measure your cups okay so it's that it takes to get to the fact that they have water but then, yeah. once I've got through the how much is what temperature. Now, this is, I've said this to you, Dale, so it's really obvious, it'll be really obvious to you, but not obvious to most people, is that the temperature of water is really important. If you drink cold water, it goes into the stomach, and it has to stay in the stomach until it becomes body temperature. Yeah. Cold water, it can't be absorbed straight away. And that water is absorbed, well, if it's warm water, it's obviously either body temperature or above body temperature. It can't be room temperature, because yeah. in my room now is about 22 degrees. The water's too cold at 22 degrees. It needs to be 37 degrees, if you like, or above. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, what if I drink really hot water? Well, you can't drink really hot water. You burn your mouth. You can drink really cold water. <laughs> you can't drink really hot water. <laughs> Crazy, you know, people drink water with ice in it. Yeah. You know, you can't, you'd burn your mouth if you had really hot water. So yeah. you don't have to worry about the, I, mean, I would say generally you don't have to worry about the water being too hot because you, you're you not going to be able to, unless you've got something wrong with your you know, yeah. nerves in your mouth, you're not going to drink too hot water. So the temperature of water is really, really important uh, that it's, it's, it's drunk and it's absorbed practically immediately, if you like, into your bloodstream and then into your bowel. Always remember that the main function of the bowel is to hydrate. And the hydration comes from the bowel. When you first start drinking water, the water you're gonna, it's going to go in the mouth and come out in the toilet because it's just literally flushing through. The body, the bowel, the, sorry, the, the, uh, the, the system, the bladder, the kidneys, yeah. to flush it through. So... Um, to support the bowel, you need to be hydrated. And to know you're drinking enough water generally is when you stop peeing it out all the time. Most people say to me, I can't drink more water because I want to go to the toilet and I'm in the car or whatever. Or not nowadays, not, but you know what I mean. Yeah, um, yeah. That is because the dehydrated. If, if you're weighing it, if it's going in one end and coming out the other, it's because the body's so dehydrated it needs to, it's filtering through the kidneys and the bladder. So once that stops, then the bowel starts to hold on to it. So let's say you've got a very dehydrated colon. It means every cell of the body is dehydrated. All your, whatever, how many trillion cells you have, yeah, every yeah. Of those cells are dehydrated, which means your brain's dehydrated. And therefore, you, you can't think. Your brain starts to shrink. You, you lose memory. 
people saying, oh, it's because I'm getting older. That's what we're talking about. Well, that's, that's just not true. It's because it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, yeah. The, the body will take water from the brain. It's got nothing left in the in the colon because it's so yeah, dehydrated. Yeah. It takes water from the brain. So to support the bowel, you need to support water. You need to support it with water. And the general rule, in fact, I've just put it on Facebook today. Uh, 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 something that I tend to. Where's, where is it? Um, uh, it was a blog that I wrote ages yeah. ago when I was doing a, a, a detox seminar. Did you know that water makes up 75% of our brains, 80% of our blood, it composes 22% of our bones? No wonder people get brittle bones. Cushions <laughs> our joints. Helps carry oxygen for breathing. How important is that? Isn't that in now? Yeah. Now helps convert food into energy. Helps convert stored fat to energy. Very very important if you want to lose weight. Helps our bodies to absorb nutrients. Protects and cushions our vital organs. Makes up seventy five percent seventy five percent of our muscles. Regulates our body temperature and helps to remove toxicity from our body. I can't say there's not that you can't talk enough about water it is absolutely our perfect medicine like you probably yeah. remember that that too, too. Wonderful. yeah so um water is and there is actually a book written water our perfect medicine i can't remember who the author is now but it was one of my it's on my bookshelf there um so we we to, so support our vows you need to support with water and the general rule of thumb is whatever you weigh in pounds convert that uh so whatever you weigh sorry in pounds yeah half that and that will be the amount of, that's the fluid ounces of water so if you're 10 stone convert that into, that converts to fluid ounces and that would be 70 fluid ounces so that is a that, that's your minimum that's your minimum I've just written that down that's really good to know yeah, that. yeah that's, mm. so whatever you are in in pounds um, half that and that is the fluid ounces you need to drink so somebody who's 15 stone they need a minimum of three liters of water throughout the day not drunk at night. To me, you drink your water up to six o'clock, your medicine. I always call it medicine. You yeah. drink medicine up to six o'clock. And then if you want to drink water after that, that's extra. So yeah, I, yeah. At my, I drink about three litres of water a day. Up to six o'clock. And then I, I do drink water at night, but that's an extra. Okay, okay. And the other thing uh, that's worth taking on, on uh, and I uh, this is important that you don't do too much of this but when somebody is weeing all the water out I tell people to put Himalayan pink sea salt it's got about 84 minerals in Himalayan pink sea salt make sure it says Himalayan pink sea salt and it's not just pink sea salt because it can just be, have colouring in it yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> put a little bit of have maybe a teaspoonful a day uh, uh, stretched out in your water just a little bit of salt and that helps to retain the water so you're not just weighing it out wow. and obviously you're getting your mi- amazing amount of minerals too uh so i think that answers it. the question that it's water you support your you support your colon through hydration and massaging yeah. Get, you know don't people ignore it you know if you sat just i mean just massage it you know from the right hand side up under under your liver across the transfer yeah and you're recommending to myself uh, when I woke up straight away to if anybody has like a tight stomach or to get the bowel mo- movement going is when you wake up. So my stomach, it's ch- completely changed now. Like I can actually put, push it in. But before it was so bloody tight. And obviously from uh, doing some work on it, it's really helped relieve a lot of the stuck energy there, which has been good. Yeah. And anywhere, you know, if you're pressing down into your bowel, people have this idea they're going to hurt themselves. They're not going to hurt themselves. They're just working with their hands. Somewhere yeah. hurts. Work on it more. You know, so I'll just put the screen down. Yeah. You can see that. 
but you know, just working in. The liver yeah. was here, down in midline in, under into your. Uh, so it, it's a, it's just yeah. a really simple thing. Do yeah, it, yeah. You know, a few seconds a day, and you go, oh wow, that's a bit tight, or oh, that hurts. Massage yeah. It out. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, you know, when I'm massaging you, it can start off being really tight, and by the end of the colonic, or even halfway through the colonic, it's no longer tight. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Through either I've moved a, a, a compaction of matter, who basically, or a, a pocket of wind. And yeah. It's not good to have wind in the bowel, gas in the gas pocket, because if you've got a gas pocket in the bowel, how can anything pass it? Yeah. Look, okay, people who have IBS, it's usually because there's big pockets of gas in there, and okay. the matter can get back, back past is literally by the bowel going into uh, 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 what's called a mass peristaltic action, and it pushes the matter out, and yeah. it removes the water that we need and the you know still uh, nutrient from the right hand side of the bowel that hasn't been absorbed. That's why they get okay. diarrhea. So it's you know a lot of people that come that have got chronic diarrhea. They're chronically constipated, which they can't okay. get pregnant. That yeah. is actually a, a story that I've missed out. I had a chap who was very, very, is in fact, he's still alive, who was uh, very ill. Uh, he's got a, a serious um, a chronic condition. And um, I'm not going to give too much information, otherwise it's it's obvious. Yeah, it's of course. Yeah, yeah. Related. Uh, he was uh, uh, somebody who was in his uh, early 70s. And he had chronic diarrhea. It wasn't his condition that was debilitating him. It was because he couldn't go out. He just had chronic diarrhea. So his wife brought him along because she'd been to see me. And um, I gave him uh, six treatments, fairly close together, actually, two weeks apart. In fact, the first two, I, it was a week apart because he was in such a state. You, you know, if you'd seen, it, seen him, he, he was just... He had chronic diarrhea, you know, just literally messing himself all day. And um, he uh, so passed huge. His treatment actually was two hours. would never do that normally. I couldn't stop the yeah. matter that was coming out. I just couldn't stop it. Oh, wow. And um, so he had six treatments. And after the sixth treatment, he started to produce some normal solid matter. Wow. Just transforming for him. Yeah. So they, you know, so people have this idea that colonics won't help somebody with diarrhea. Absolutely, there's a, you know, there's a, there's an issue there. Um, and, and going, so going on from that is what about probiotics? Are they, talk, let's talk about those and how they are good for the gut and the internal. Yeah. Um, so uh, the probiotic that I use, as you know, because I'll have talked to you about it, is called yeah. um, Prime Directive. And I've used that one uh, probably for about seven years. It's yeah. my the reason I, I recommend that one is from a company called Safe Remedies is uh, because I can tell from the colonic it's working. So if anybody's got really good uh, um, a, a good balanced gut, yeah. Wow, um, it will show uh, in the quality of the matter that moves. So matter that moves should be well-formed, uh, bulky. Yeah. And people who have got low uh, or poor quality bowel flora, uh, it'll be bitty and not formed even though yeah. you, might, you might go to the toilet and they'll think it oh it's okay that's because yeah. they're going maybe once a day or once every other day and it's just become compacted so yeah. uh the probiotic and we've got to remember prebiotics as well so prebiotics are feeding our gut bacteria probiotics are putting bacteria in there and it's important okay. that that's a full spectrum you don't want to be putting yeah. one you know, we've got all these huge amounts of different things going on in our bowel. So yeah. why put one thing in? That's like expecting to be healthy and only eating apples. <laughs> <laughs> um, so apples, apples are good, but, you know, yeah. not, not <laughs> So 
Um, so, that, the, so the pro, pro and prebiotics are really important. Uh, so I, I recommend Prime Directive, Tom Safe Remedies, because it's a full spectrum of bacteria. And I can tell usually within two weeks of somebody taking that, that there's an improvement in their bowel flora. Um, and for anybody that takes other things, I would say if they don't notice a difference, it's not working. If they don't notice a difference in their bowel flora, then it's not, it's not working. And so therefore, it's, it's just a waste of time. Um, and it should work. I mean, just in the same way as if you have a change of diet, if you improve your diet, you should. I mean, some people, when they improve the diet, they start to get gurgling and, uh, you know, they might get wind, they might get different things because they're feeding, improving your diet. Obviously, it's feeding certain yes. you know, bacteria and, you know, fresh food and fresh vegetables are act as prebiotics. So they might feel they get a bit bloated. Um, and that sort of thing, somebody suddenly has a change of diet in the same way as if somebody has a change of diet from a good diet to a poor diet, for whatever reason, they're going to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> have a, a, an impact. But obviously, um, probiotics, yes, I would say for most people, they are pretty important. But, but prebiotics, I mean, obviously, any fresh uh, food. Um, uh, uh, something called inulin, um, which is um, in like uh, high high amount in juice, uh, garlic, yeah, uh, onions, asparagus, bananas, oats, barley, apples, flax seeds, seaweed. And those things all have. High in inulin. You can take it as a supplement. I, I actually take something each day, even though I've got a really healthy diet. I do yeah. actually take a supplement because it's it's a, it's a, such a good prebiotic. The prime directive is a pre and probiotic. It's not being created in a lab. It's created yeah. by growing uh, he- healthy foods naturally have probiotics in them. Okay. And prime, prime directive is grown in Australia. And it's it's grown uh, for its high. All the different things that are in there are grown for their high levels of natural pro and prebiotics, and the process it goes through, which is called flora, yeah. it enhances that. But I just know it works because of, of what I do. But yeah, um, I always say start off with small amounts. If you're going to take, go for that. Start off with small amounts. It does suggest you take a teaspoonful a day. I say start off with a quarter of a teaspoon a day you know to to ease into your system so you don't get uh because it is going to improve the quality of your bowel movement but if your bowel is weak if your muscle tone of the bowel is weak and you're increasing the amount of matter you have then your bowel just in the same way if you've had your arm in a sling you're not going to be able to lift a weight and i've had this section uh, I broke my wrist about three years ago. So I've been telling that story for a long time. And when I, once I got the pots off, even though I've been using my hand because it still was working as it happens. Um, oh, my God. I really understood that. It was just so floppy. And that's basically what your bowel gets like. So you need to <laughs> go increase that. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 in, increasing that um, uh, quality. Yeah. And, and just going for, forward on this, uh, so I've got a, fa- a family member who's been to see Liz as well, um, and she. It, it's funny how some people are just, uh, their ideas are so different than ours. Uh, they went and it cleared up her IBS for like three weeks, and that she went and that was it. She thought, she because she went once, that's it. <laughs> Uh, and this is a big thing regarding healing wise for a lot of people out there, not just hydrotherapists, not just uh, practitioners, um, Reiki teachers, all sorts of other different things is healing is a process. It's not an event we do one time and then our body's all fine. It's Mm -hmm. something we go through and we have to keep doing the discipline. It's so important to be disciplined in this field, to be able to become your own self master and to be able to heal majority of yourself i'm not saying you're going to heal all of yourself but um is to to have the discipline and use the process of not going to the clinics once again oh, i've done it and that's it it's a process of going and regularly 
doing it if you want to do it at the beginning of the year the next year start again maybe go once a year but my advice and what about you Liz is for people out there who are thinking how long when do I go how many times do I go what's your advice to those people thinking that at this moment everybody's different yeah I can't I can't I couldn't put one one size fit all um it, it depends on what they're massaging the bowel and they've got yeah. the right thoughts in the head positive thoughts because it's to me that's number one um you know really respecting the body and nurturing it uh you know that that person may well need actually it's not a need uh, i want to change that um uh benefit yeah, from, yeah. you know maybe a clonic a year i mean i have i have treatments nowadays about every four months I have three bowel movements a day. You know, yeah. you think, how, why on earth would somebody have, who has three bowel movements a day uh, need a colonic? I don't need a colonic. You My do. body yeah. benefits from a colonic. So it's a complete different to needing. And yeah. I don't, I, I wouldn't like to think that somebody felt they needed to come to me. It's yeah. because they know it's going to benefit from on a hydration point of view. Where as much as, and one of the questions you were, you, you, you were going to ask is, about um, uh, you know taking care of your body and uh, you know sort of general thing as far as um, I can't remember what the question was now I wrote it down um, so um, it, it's it's this it's this difference between needing people like us yeah and not needing people like us because I wouldn't like to think I go to a, a, a an acupuncturist called Kai Shear, and just love him. He's just such, such a lovely man. Uh, he's in Horsforth, the Horsforth Healing Hub. And uh, I don't go to him because I need to. I go to him because he supports my health. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I support my health every single day. And I, I you know, meditate and, and walk and cycle and you know, drink lots of water and all of that things. Um, but I, I go to him because I know it... it it supports my energy. Yeah. Um, so I, I think of that exactly the same as that somebody who comes to me for colonics or for Nate or Psych K. I mean, maybe, you know, in, in, with, with Nate, a lot of people see with Nate, uh, they can be chronically unwell. In an ideal world, I would see people who weren't chronically unwell, they were doing coming to me. And I do see quite a lot number of people with Nate who just support, they come to me because they're supporting their their lifestyle and health by you know going by taking care yeah of themselves to stop themselves to to prevent illness and we i think you know all of us need to have a you know so many people need to have a change of mindset that you don't come to somebody like me or somebody like you or or a practitioner yeah uh because you're unwell you act with them because you want to stay well and stay the best you can be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and initially it may well be that people come because they're not well and they want advice on how to become well, how to balance, how to create that wellness, that abundance of wellness yeah. in life. And going to, into that abundance side of things, is a, there's a lot of people, and I've heard it myself from personal experience, of when I do talk about colonics and talk about the money I've spent in colonics, I think one of the big issue with on um, the spiritual sense of the community is that we do have to get over abundance and we have to understand that a therapist is valued and they deserve money and they deserve our time. And it's getting over that fact that the money you're putting into the clinic is the money you're putting into yourself and there's no amount of money you can spend what's your self-worth, so to say. A lot of people find it hard buying a clinic, but they'll happily go and buy something they don't need or an iPhone or anything like that. One of my big lessons in life is to value myself and to, I've had to up my prices when I do go back into doing the self work, the healing work in September, uh, just so I can support myself and I am worth it and the value is there and I do feel the community needs to get the stick up their ass in a sense that we need to value our healers and we need to value our practitioners and they need to be paid and to be able to manifest and have a good quality of life. So, 
I, my own advice would be uh, looking, doing the inner work and finding the, the inner patterns from the parents or any programs which stopping us from having the abundance to be able to make sense. Um, it does, yeah. it does, Dale, uh, but it's the abundance of health. That's it, it yeah. If you have an abundance of health, you've got a clear, healthy mind and you yeah. respect yourself and obviously respect. I mean, to me, uh, you know, as far as the, the planet is concerned, if if everybody worked with themselves, not particularly on themselves, with themselves, yeah. and created yeah. abundance in health, then they would have abundance in all other elements because abundance of yeah. health means looking after your mind it looks after your body you look after your environment look after the people around you and that yeah. goes on so if everyone had that you know to me that's a big thing as far as what i i do uh to you know practice is being the best i can be i've got still got a long way to go i still you know i had a lot of trauma when i was when i was yeah. young still work through it sometimes uh, just listening to uh, a tape that, uh, uh, called um, uh, by Edith, I can't think of her name now, Edith, uh, uh, cha- that she was an Auschwitz survivor. And that, you know, just been listening to it over the last few days, that brought up certain things for me. I don't push that away. I go, oh, wow, this is amazing. I've done all this work and this is still... I would work on it in the same way, you know, and, and somebody that comes to me for Nate, they might come to me for... Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, maybe allergies, uh, uh, just somebody would come with, you know, chronic health conditions. There's always, 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 always an element, big element of past holding on to stress. So all of that needs to be cleared. What you know, all needs to be cleared on different levels so they can start to recognize abundance and uh, absorb and recognize they're good enough to have abundance. And I'm not talking about abundance in money. It's yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. In fact, I, I often say you can have a lot of money, but that doesn't mean to say you're abundant. Yeah, you need to. It's like the uh, Native Americans with the medicine wheel, uh, which talks about all aspects of the lives and all parts have to be balanced to actually create a whole abundance. So your physical, your mental, your forgiveness, all different parts of the medicine wheel to create your yeah, abundance. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, so yeah, we, uh, Chris was actually showing me before we spoke, he's got the OxyTech. Would you like to, cause I know you spoke a lot about the OxyTech to me. So would you like to uh, just give a bit of a breakdown about OxyTech and what it does to the system? Okay. So, um, right. So first of all, uh, I'm going to say, I use Oxitec because I do colonics. Yeah, yeah. So if somebody introduces Oxitec who's very dehydrated, it won't work. Okay. And if it, it, the, the, they could well get uh, bloatedness and it, it, it will create dieback of, of, of yeast, overgrowth of candida, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so number one, if somebody decides to go out and buy Oxitec, they and they don't it doesn't work that's because they're not hydrated okay it works so uh on the instructions for oxytec this is my own personal thing it yeah. will say take oxytec uh, i'm saying this before i go into the benefits because people if people if they hear the benefits they might just suddenly think i'm going to buy it so yeah of course it's great to uh, hear that yeah, yeah. Layered. so um it, on the on the tub it will say take say one at night on a monday two on a tuesday three on a wednesday four on a thursday to, what i found is that was far too much too quickly for most people mm. i will never ever recommend oxytec unless i'm working with somebody who's hydrated it just don't bonded to magnesium and in the presence of water it releases the oxygen into the bowel and if, if you're releasing oxygen to the bowel, you're releasing oxygen into every cell of the body. So okay. it's obviously going to ha- ha- create yeah. a detox effect. So, uh, so the, oxi- the oxygen in the bowel will help break down really compacted matter. And therefore, the reason why I use it 
and, and encourage clients to it is because it reduces the amount of colonic somebody has has to have to get to the point where their bowel is freeing. And obviously yeah, my yeah. job as a practitioner is to get people well as quick as possible, not just to get loads of colonics in. But yeah. one of the I want to get to the point where they have colonics because they benefits the health, not having colonics because they're not going to the toilet. So to me, Oxitec pushes that, that, that it helps people to get to a point that they want to get much quicker, but only if they're having enough water. And to me, warm water, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier. So warm yeah. water, uh, looking at the weight, the uh, weight pounds, divided by the fluid ounces. Uh, so the benefit of Oxitec is to break down matter, for me initially when I introduce it, to break down really compacted matter to a consistency that the bowel can move out. So it will break it down. And when you start taking it, you're going to get loose stools. Yeah, yeah. It, it, something that's chronically constipated cannot imagine getting loose stools, but that's exactly <laughs> what happens. And that is not giving them diarrhea, completely yeah. different. Diarrhea is when the, the water that we need in the right-hand side of the bowel is pushed out. When you have, take the Oxitec, it's that breakdown of old matter that's at a consistency that the bowel can move out. Uh, and so uh, where you would stop, let's say we take it. So I, I suggest you take one at night for three nights. Somebody else, it might be six nights. But in general, this is a general recommendation for me, for me personally. Yeah, yeah. Four or three nights. Three at night, four uh, until it gets to a consistency, as in loose, that you can manage. Everybody's different. Everyone has a different lifestyle. Yeah, so if yeah. I, I'm working with somebody who was a teacher and couldn't just go out to the toilet, they may well take more at the weekend, say Friday and Saturday, than they would, say, Monday to Thursday, because they can manage the bowel better. Um, yeah. so it's, it's everyone's different. Uh, but uh, I, ideally you would push it until you were quite loose because that is then uh, survive in an oxygenated environment. Really important is that. Can't survive in an oxygenated environment. So you will start to break down and move that candidate out. But if you don't take enough, let's say somebody would be quite happy having one bowel movement today. Yeah. They only have one, they've only ever been used to one bowel movement every three days or once a week. They might yeah. stop at one bowel movement a day and be quite happy. If they have candida, then it's not enough to move it out and they can start to get bloated because the dye back isn't being moved out. Yeah. Um, and therefore, it will start to feed the candida that's there. So generally speaking, uh, even though it says on the bump that you get from uh, Dulwich Health that... Oxitec can be taken instead of colonics. The reason I don't agree with that is because um, is because when somebody has a candida, let's say, because obviously there's lots of other stuff in there that, that yeah. uh, we tend to know the word candida, and uh, it's not been when I'm supporting it with colonic, I'm getting the water all the way around and moving that out. So I'm supporting it. I'm I'm offering it as a supplement with the colonics to move that matter out. It's still a great product, even if you're not having colonics, but recognise that you need to take enough to actually move things out. Otherwise, it can look like it makes you bloated. When actually, yeah. it's the because you're not moving the... Uh, you're not getting the matter out to the degree that you need, and therefore, you're, you're not getting the, the, the candidate out. So it's yeah. your benefits. I love it. It's one of my favourite products, other than Prime Directive. And and I do recommend also takes Prime Directive, not because one needs the other. It's just that yeah. somebody who who's I mean I take Oxitec every day, take four actually at night because I like the oxygen. I've taken oxygen products for oh my goodness, twenty five at least twenty five years. Yeah, um, and I take a product called um, uh, Oxy. I think it's called Oxypower, from Safe Remedies, where I get the yeah. prime directive from. 
Um, so, you know, that's taking it, but I, I take, put that in the water. But the Oxitec gets straight to the bowel. It's, it's just, it's, I just like, I, I really, you know, it's oxygen is, we just don't get enough oxygen. I you know, yeah. really do do, you know, a, a place where the oxygen levels are quite high, but a lot of people are in offices all day and they're not getting out, they're not walking, their oxygen levels are quite low. So oxygen, uh, the Oxitec benefits us in, in so many different ways. Mm. You just start to take it then, Chris? Did you say? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking it at the moment, no. Um, uh, I've been thinking about buying some more. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I, I know that it is, it is on the pricey side. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's quite pricey. So um, no, I'll, sh- I'll just show you the one I, I, was, I was using for a while. So it's, um, I think it's the World Healing Center, the Oxy Powder. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's the same consistency or the same. You no, know, it, it doesn't work the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, do you know, I, I've used lots and lots of different oxygen products and looking at them, they look, you know, before Oxitec, I used um, something called Oxy, it was a, for the bowel. Um, I think that was called Oxy Power, actually. It was a, uh, in, a, in a, a tablet form. And it was good, but it was recommended you only took it two or three times a year. Right. Um, but the, even though the ingredients look the same, with all of the products, I've found Oxitec works better than anything else I've, I've, I've used. It's to the degree that the Oxy Power didn't break down the matter in the same way as the Oxitec does. I so see. I agree. Okay. With this and if there was something that I looked at, and I do try different things, and I went back to the Oxy Power, um, um, oh, maybe nine months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I bought some actually the Ox Power I buy uh, from the company that I use it's about £10 a tub less but it just didn't do the same thing right, so, so that's yeah. heck. beautiful you. and you. so what so Liz going to connecting food to the gut again so why is it important to have clean food and what foods should we avoid for obviously our gut set good sake and our health sake what food would you recommend not to to ha- eat so on and so forth that's easy <laughs> and <laughs> just processed foods yeah yeah uh, i was uh, chatting to somebody um well i've had this conversation with so many different people uh people who who um uh m- make all the meals up for the week all from fresh produce freeze it and then take it out of the micro out, out of the freezer and stick it in the microwave completely. So microwave food as well. You're completely yeah. destroying the nutrients. So there they have all these lovely fresh ingredients, making up putting it a good you know food, freezing it, and then stick it in the microwave because it's easy when they get home. So yeah. it's not necessarily just what we don't eat. It's you know a lot of people eating ready meals, it's going in the microwave. Oh, my God. Yeah. Double whammy. <laughs> Double whammy. It's already been pre-cooked, and then you microwave yeah. it. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, I don't have a microwave. My, my daughters don't have microwaves. They weren't brought up with microwaves because I just wouldn't have one because they brought, they obviously were brought in. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were there. And it was because I read an article going back, oh, my God, probably 30 years ago, the person who, who created food and he yeah. created this a huge article he was desperate at the idea search for microwaves which was for um the military was actually yeah. being used to create an oven and for many years people heated baby's milk up for goodness sake in a microwave and uh, so mm. that was really uh, i mean obviously there wasn't the computers around it was a it was an article that i read uh, so that completely blew my brain. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it's just so obvious. We all know what isn't good for us. You know, it doesn't mean to say we never have it, but we all know, you know, too much sugar, uh, processed foods. Um, I mean, it's pointless. Why would anybody want to put a McDonald's in the mouth? You are really out of balance if you're eating a McDonald's. <laughs> that, <laughs> it's your, hey, old Big Mac. <laughs> I, I honestly believe that when somebody's gut 
is in a good state, state. Looking at McDonald's, the thought of eating a McDonald's would be completely repulsive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I really believe that the health of the gut depends on what foods you want to eat. And if you're wanting to eat processed foods, then you need to look at your gut. And if you change your gut, and I see this all the time with clients, I don't need to tell them, don't eat this. Don't. I never. In fact, I never do that. I would never say this. It's not for me to tell people what to eat and what not to eat. I can advise and say, well, I wouldn't eat that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd say change your gut health. This is whether somebody's coming, whatever they're coming to me for, change your gut health. You won't want it. And the children that come to me, so I see a lot of children with uh, autism and ADHD and that type of thing. The parents can't change the diet. The diet naturally alters. When I work with that, those parents and the child, obviously if I'm working with a very young child, then as I'm working with uh, altering the gut through, say, Nate, because obviously I'm not working clonics on the children, yeah, yeah. Nate, the gut changes. So therefore, they're eating what they want, the sugar and the God knows what. That naturally changes. And when you look at a child's gut, the, ch- the child who wouldn't give up sugar, and the parent thinks, oh, my God, how, they're bringing, I'm taking them to this practitioner and she's going to tell me to give up sugar. No, I don't. I don't need to. Yeah. Because the gut changes naturally. So that's exactly the same for an adult. The healthier the gut, the less likely you are. You're just not going to want that. You know, that. you don't need to say you're not going to have a piece of meat now and again. But yeah. you, this, you, you just wouldn't be attracted. Your gut is, you know, our body is so intelligent. It's only because we take that intelligence away that it starts to get schizophrenic. <laughs> and it's, yeah. like, you know, rubbish and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so why would you want a Coca-Cola? You know, it just, people have often said to me over oh, many, many years, oh, but Liz, you're just so good. I couldn't be like you. I'm not good. My gut's good. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Have you seen that? Uh, there's that picture of that McDonald's burger, isn't there? A guy found in his back of his car for like a year and a half and it was uh, still intact. Still looked exactly the same. <laughs> That's <laughs> <right>. unbelievable. <laughs> And, and uh, so connecting to the gut, I do feel like we've, we've talked a lot about the gut and the health. So I do feel we'll just continue on talking about the gut. Then it'd be absolute honour to have you on again to talk about fasting and the kidneys, parasites, so on and so forth. So still on the gut uh, subject. So from my own experience, I went vegan at one point and my gut completely changed. Is there um, any insight you've got from those who have started eating meat, who've gone to vegetables and not eating meat anymore, does it affect the gut at all? What's your what's your perspective on this? So uh, this is a really big question, actually, um, because, I mean, as you know, I, I've worked with um, blood typing for over 20 years. Um, and this is going to be a bit long. I'm sorry about this, because I, I, you know me, I can't just answer a question. It's just too complicated. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, 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 on a, from a personal level, I have a predisposition to multiple sclerosis. I think I've told you that actually. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, twenty years. So, twenty-two, twenty-three years ago, I had a, 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 a major MS attack. Came out of the blue. I was uber healthy, vegan, juicing. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I was um, uh, still in my studies for uh, Chinese medicine. Uh, I, I, I walked on the face of it; everything was absolutely perfect. I was ignoring certain things, to be honest, because there was, you know, was, uh, uh, there were certain things that, uh, you know, in, in what looks like a perfect life, every, you know, there's always the elements, yeah, and there were yeah. things that I was ignoring as far as stuff that I hadn't dealt with from childhood. Yeah, um, and it always comes back and back in the bottom, doesn't it? If you don't deal with these things, it does. And all of that was going on, so absolutely devastating for me. How could I, you know, doing all these things, not looking after myself, have something like this? I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, 
uh, it was just horrendous. So um, at that same time, the Eat More If You Type book was uh, published. Yeah. And, um, I couldn't work, you know, so there it was with this big, thick book. And I went through it and it's like, oh my God, everything that I'm doing, eating, drinking, all supportive for blood type A. More importantly, it was poison, negative for blood type O. I'm a blood type O, rhesus, uh, rhesus positive. And um, so I'm, I'm also what's called a non-secretor, which is really un unusual, but that, I didn't know that for about another seven or eight years. So being the person that I am, because I am naturally a seeker, you know, anyone that knows me knows that I, I, I just seek. You know, I'm, I'm never... Happy. I don't take yes and no answers. Up. I, I seek. I want to, and it's it's great now as we have got the internet. I mean, I had to go through, yeah. you know, so much before the, the whole internet because obviously it was all literally buying books and yeah, um, mm. which I still buy books, but it, it's easier uh, to seek now with the internet. So uh, what I did, um, I couldn't just go from a vegan to. Uh, 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 you know, a meat eater. It was impossible. Yeah. Anyone that's been a vegan knows you can't just switch. You can switch yeah. from a vegan to a vegan to a vegetarian or a vegan, but you can't switch. So what I did is, you know, I I um, I really studied it. I read it what half a dozen times, which is what I'm like. So I really, really understood the fundamentals of the blood types. So four blood types: blood type A, blood type O, blood type B, and blood type. A, B, and all the elements of that. So what I started to do was introduce some fish a couple of times a week. Yeah. Uh, but I, what I also did was really start, I started to look at what I'd ignored. So it was those two folds, what I'd been ignoring uh, from different stuff that I needed to heal through. I mean, bearing in mind, I was going through a time when I was having, you know, studying acupuncture, studying body work. So I was also going through a huge amount of shift yeah. Uh, you know, massive treatments because we're working on each other, obviously. So massive, massive treatments. Um, so uh, like a lot of changes, they come with other things. So I, I worked on that and it took me about eight months to what I call recover. And um, I got my speech back. And in effect, it was like, oh, I've done that. And I left it and I carried on with my life and I was carried on with my practice and I learned a lot from that it yeah. really helped, um really really helped me as a practitioner to ask questions I, I get majority of people if they don't know the blood type I ask them to find it or if they can't find it I do a blood type I do a test I got um, one of those <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you were an A weren't you yeah A, yeah. A, yeah. yeah you, you're just so typical of an A and um oh you're an AB What's no? Uh, no, I'm an A. Gabrielle is an AB. Uh, Marley's an A pl B plus, and Gabrielle's an A B minus. Right. So yeah. and um, yeah, we've got quite an B. I think we've got one B as well. So there's quite a few different ones in our family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really comp I mean, if you've been an A B and Gabrielle had been an O, you could actually have any four of the blood types. It gets really complicated in families when that happens. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, so I, you know, it took me eight months, and uh, when I came back to England. Uh, I think it was three years later um, I was then I started to study there was a lot of stuff going on we got the clinic in Otley I was had my clinic in Doncaster we were doing a lot of work I was I just started uh, my two-year training in uh, with the College of Naturopathic uh, Nutrition uh, life again seemed really good it was exciting I had another attack um, I, at that point I'd introduced fish Blah blah blah. Still doing meditation, but I'd gone. I'd left. I'd, I'd stepped back a lot from meditation because my life was so busy. Um, okay. Crazy. I recommend to anybody do not step back from your core things like meditation, mindfulness. Yeah, all that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had another really major attack. I'd ignored that I had leg drag. That was my at the time. I, I, that's what I believed was my first sign. I've now learned it isn't. Um, so. Major attack. Uh, obviously, uh, my practice hadn't opened in because I uh, obviously couldn't walk. I looked like I had a stroke. Um, 
so I was in quite a mess. So again, built myself up. But this time, I really looked deeply on the whole, okay, this has happened. Uh, it's there. Um, and so that's uh, uh, maybe 19 years ago. I've been fine since. But my what I realized, maybe about 10 years later, recognize that my first sign wasn't a leg drag yeah it was um it was a luck a, a memory loss a losing words that was the first sign it's just that I, I thought you know it's just me i thought it was part of me it's obviously been around yeah, yeah. You know, being so young i just thought that was part of me i was you know so went through these times of being a bit dopey when you get older, they just say it's you getting old. But at the time, it wasn't obviously couldn't be put down to that. So that was the yeah, thing. Yeah. And when I had Nate, I went through the protocol for multiple sclerosis, and it's then so it is ten years ago because it's ten years since I studied Nate. That was really when I left what I felt left it behind. That I did a lot, you know, a lot of work or worked with somebody did a lot of work on balancing my brain, and uh, took me through that. So um, the whole thing uh, with you know, um, when you look at blood type, you can see that there's elements of certain things that you're more relevant, pre prevalent to. And yeah. MS is uh, blood type O's. That doesn't need to be there. That does not need to be there. So, you know, if you look at the blood typing, then Dr. Adamo, who developed it, who's a naturopathic doctor, a medical doctor and a naturopathic doctor, he makes it really clear that if you read that, as an example, blood type A is a more prone to cancer, he makes it really clear that's only if you're doing all the things that are not supporting your blood type. And I was doing all the things that wasn't supporting my blood type, and it all looked perfect. Meditation, I mean, meditation obviously is good for all blood types, yeah. uh, but the foods that I was having, really clean, healthy foods. So that is really going back to your, your question about vegan, vegetarian, meat eater. It's it's really important. I mean, I'm very passionate about blood typing. It's it's a core. And we, everything about who you are, where you're coming from, rather yeah. than... I mean, obviously, I do get uh, clients who, for the relig religious reasons, they're vegetarian or vegan. Um, yeah. And typos. Yes, there's ways to support it, but it's just more, much more difficult. And yeah. I was, I was sprouting. I was, you know, a living food. It wasn't just, you know, having vegetables. I had what I call really good quality proteins from sprouted, you know, sprouts. Is an avoid for me as a blood typo. Yeah. It's tomatoes for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tomatoes are very, uh, I've always had a funny thing about them. I've always, from when I eat them, they just don't feel right for me. And it was funny how tomatoes was one of those. It's the void. Uh, it's a big void for blood type A's. And for a lot of blood type A's that are very out of balance, that's just one thing to say. Ask me to give up anything, but don't ask me to give up. <laughs> so I would say the more out of balance you are, the things that you really find difficult to give up. Whatever yeah. that is, and once you more in balance, then it, it, it will it will just uh, um, be easy. My my grandson's a blood type A. He can't stand tomatoes. Yeah, <laughs> that mm. makes me. If he starts to want tomatoes, I'd be treating him. <laughs> 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 and that, so that was, sorry, that was such a long answer. Oh no, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. So we're now we've now we've d dived into the blood type um, area. So. I was, as I remember, was it turkey, which is like a neutral? Was that a kind of a neutral meat? And there's your beef, which is not very good anyway for all blood types. Is that right? No, no, uh, beef is good for blood type O's. Okay, okay. I mean, we can't talk about beef as in beef, can we? Yeah, yeah. We can't talk course, about anything yeah. in that because we're talking about, you know, grass fed meat. We're not talking about any more meat. We're talking about. 100% grass-fed meat. Yeah. Not you can, It's like saying, you know, I can't, I can have, let's say, it's like saying I can eat apples because they're healthy. Well, it depends on where the apples come from, what yeah. it's sprayed with, That's how it's been, 
you know, collected, how old it is, yeah. he, you know, it can be irradiated and be two years old. So, you know, when we talk, when I talk about food, it's talking about where it's come from, where it's grown, yeah. how it's been treated, how long it's been around. So, yeah, so uh, 100% grass-fed meat is actually beneficial for yeah. blood type O uh, secreta. Yeah, and, so and e even from the... Even from looking, because I've looked into the blood type and it's really helped me, the certain foods which can obviously go towards the blood type A. Uh, I went through the, the uh, I went into the vegan diet and I was having like lots of spirulina, lots of, uh, lots of salads and stuff like that. But this was probably about 2012, 2013 before veganism was, had the marketing behind it did now. So it wasn't, there wasn't as many products out back then as there is now for, uh, to help and support vegans. But uh, the way, and uh, because I was, I didn't look into it. I didn't look into the uh, being safe while I was eating, and look into like you were saying the blood types. Uh, I lost weight, and I, I looked. I turned really ill at one point because I was completely eating the wrong foods, and I just I looked like a skeleton, right. and um, I wasn't realizing what I was doing to myself. It was only Gabrielle what showed me the picture of myself, and I said, "Wow, what the hell have I done?" And some people go through it and they don't understand. They don't understand the, the impact that they're doing to themselves. And it's sad to see because it's, veganism is a beautiful diet and for a lot of people it works. But there's a lot of people out there who have actually almost died from going into veganism and not understanding it. If you're going to do the vegan diet, you have to have the data like Liz has been doing the work and the research and understanding it you have to be able to understand it to the point where it's healthy and sustainable for you because if it isn't people have died from yeah. going vegan and thinking they can survive and uh, if you're not knowledgeable if you've not done the research go do a course go find a nutritionist mm -hmm. uh, I do think that when it comes to stuff like that people do need to really look into areas and ways that can actually benefit themselves from learning about food so yeah yeah, and you know, if, if, as I would say to anybody who's vegetarian or vegan, um, to make you know, make sure that the, the quality, you know, start yeah. doing sprouting. It's so simple, this sprouting. I mean, one of the things that I always keep in um, uh, are um, mixed pulses and sprouts. I wouldn't eat those as they are because I, I don't think they're that good for you. But I would sprout them so you can either have yeah. them raw or cook them once sprouted. Um, you know, always soak them, uh, anything like that. So, I mean, I soak things like that for 24 hours. Uh, rice I soak overnight. You need to release the enzymes. You know, they, they have, uh, they, they release, uh, they, they have things that affect your digestion. So yeah. if you soak them, it releases those negative enzymes that stops digestion. So a lot of people have problems with pulses because they can't digest. As soon as they sprout them, there's no problem. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're having uh, lentils, Soak them for 24 hours, give them a good, rinse them obviously, 20, at 20, rinse them say at night and morning, um, and then cook them. But if you want to sprout them, you'll just get a little sprout and they, they're just great for uh, high levels of minerals and vitamins and yeah. protein. Uh, it's understanding what you're eating. Yeah. And for goodness sake, not buying these vegan ready meals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In the end as well, the, the main thing for me was about eating the right proteins as well. There was a, a big thing for me that my body, my, it, the, my muscle started to go on itself and started to eat away at my fats because I was trying to eat loads of rice. I was trying to eat chickpeas, all sorts of stuff. But for me, because I'm quite, I'm 205 pounds at the moment, and I'm always been quite a big person. Um, so for me, it just didn't support my my bones and uh, it felt like I, I was depressed as well for some reason when I, when I did the diet and I went through all that I was just really down all the time and um, I was going back to this gentleman called Andrew who was talking about uh, protein and protein feed your kundalini and he was recommended that we have to at least have 40 grams of protein per day or our body goes into a process of survival mode where we're not getting enough protein where we break down mentally mm. the bones don't get enough energy uh, so for all of those if you are who are listening if you've got any problems if you are having the vegetarian vegan and diet vegan diet if you are feeling tired or anything maybe it's like Liz was saying look into the blood types and look what blood type you are and what kind of food matches that 
and look into the protein you're having. If you're not getting 40 grams of protein a day, you need, you need to be getting the protein inside you because I've done it. This is from my own experience. I've, I was depressed. I was down. I was. I just felt like shit every day. I didn't want to get up because my body didn't have the protein. I didn't have the energy. So um, it's great. Obviously, we've gone into this uh, side of things. So yeah, thank you. Mm. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, so we've gone on. So um, and we've gone on to the blood types. So you, what what blood type are you, Chris? Do you know which one you are? I, I don't actually know what blood type I am. Um, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if there's any way of finding out, or uh, you know, without without uh, going to the doctor, uh, getting a, a sample, uh, uh, is there any way of finding out just through uh, you know my eating habits or anything like that? Just definitely give me. Oh, a heads up. <laughs> you, can buy, you can buy a kit online. It costs okay. about pounds. Um, okay. Uh, if you just put Google "eat right for your type." Um, blood type kit you'll you'll get one fact um, okay when I've finished if you send me a, a message Chris I'll send you the link yeah cool okay mm. thank you just don't be putting your finger through Liz's door and asking for it <laughs> <laughs> not doing these guys <laughs> door, door process just open the thing and the hand like <laughs> 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 so so yeah it's been an absolute great show i've really enjoyed it and liz it'd be great to have you on again to talk about the parasites the liver the kidneys because we've got so much more to talk about <laughs> and um for all of those listening in the future is how can they get a hold of you and how can they see what's going on what, what website etc yeah that's just it's so easy because i've had a website for such a long time just put liz cunningham in uh i mean depending uh, Otley, but if you put Otley yeah. in rather than Hubie, um, it, that was, so my website is um, otleynaturalhealth.com. Um, my mobile number is 07949 784111. Um, yeah, just uh, it, it should it, it, it normally come up really easy. Yeah, um, and what we'll do, we'll put all the information and description in the on the video as well. So her contact details will be there for you to be able to click on. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much, Liz. It's been an absolute thank honor you and very pleasure much. discussing <laughs> everything with you. It's it's so nice to have your knowledge and to be able to like I was speaking to Liz before. It's that it's all right having experience, but when you've had that, when you've been through it all physically and tried everything, there's a a class it is like so a wisdom which comes from your own perspective where you've tried everything out it's the same with the healing work when i'm doing the training for reiki i've done it a lot of times and i've tried i've had these many issues that many issues it becomes as like a, a class it isn't self-wisdom so it's great to be able for you to share your frequency uh, and share it with the world and help others out there who are looking into detoxing so on and so forth thank you dale Thank so you. I'd like to thank you, Chris, as well, for joining me on this show. And we'll be back next week as well. So thank you. Have a good day or evening. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.